everybody. Um, this talk is called Becoming Fearless, um, or Lessons Learned from Building Tools About Mental Health. And as you know from the laundry list of triggers that um, are about to happen, I thought we could use some puppies so that it at least offsets it just a little bit. Uh, so first and foremost, this is my dog, Scout. Um, he is my emotional support animal. Unfortunately, he is only four and a half months old. Um, a little bit too young to make the flight over from San Francisco, so unfortunately he had to stay home, which is why basically everything is slides about him. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> um, I am a software engineer at GitHub. Um, I am on the community and safety team. You heard a little bit about it from February, um, about the things that we are trying to do. Um, we are basically trying to make the internet a better place um, and by making anti-harassment tools which basically means that we are superheroes because it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> um, but every hero has a backstory. And, uh, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> mine involves sexual assault. Um, so if, if any of this does bother you, feel free to leave the room. Um, I won't be offended at all. Scout might, but he's not here. Uh, so my story starts with Netflix. Um, my friends said, oh, hey, Danielle, you should check out the show. You like motorcycles? There are motorcycles here. You like attractive people? There are attractive people on this show. <laughs> you should check out Sons of Anarchy. And I was like, all right, okay, cool. Check this out. Right. Um, what my friend neglected to tell me is that this is a very, very violent show. Um, and when one of the main characters gets gang raped, it triggered my PTSD. Um, I've been sexually assaulted several times in the past. The most recent one was uh, four years at the end of this month. And so I had panic attacks, flashbacks, and I lost about three days where I don't really remember what happened um, after I saw this scene. And when I came out of this fog, I thought, you know, if only I had known how bad this was going to be. If only I had known that this scene was going to happen, I wouldn't have watched it. And so that gave me the idea for Fearless, um, which is crowdsourced trigger warnings for Netflix users with PTSD. And it is currently a Chrome extension. There's a desktop version coming soon, don't worry. Um, and uh, so all you have to do is go to the Chrome store, download it, um, works in your Chrome, in your Chrome browser. Um, there's a list of categories. Um, I'm working on expanding this list, um, but currently there are things like LGBT, LGBT hate crimes, um, animal abuse, depression and suicide, um, sexual assault, war crimes. Um, so you get to choose which categories you want to receive triggers for. At about 30 seconds before a reported trigger, um, this little uh, bubble in the lower right-hand corner shows up. It's a subtle notification on purpose. Um, if you decide that you are strong enough today to deal with your triggers, then by all means, go for it, push through, I believe in you. Um, if you don't, then that's totally okay. Um, but at least you have a heads up and you know that something's about to happen. As I mentioned before, it is crowdsourced information, um, meaning the more people that use it, the better. Um, and you, if you see something potentially triggering, for example, I have a friend who does not like birds, um, you can uh, just click on the, click on the logo um, choose which categories this trigger belongs to, and it'll submit the uh, show's metadata as well as the timestamp um, of that trigger. So that's a side project that I work on. Um, and being part of GitHub and working on the team that I'm doing, uh, that I'm on, uh, you're surrounded by these amazing people who are really trying to make a difference in the world. You know, February is my manager, uh, Coraline Ada, she is, um, a really huge figure in the Ruby community. Um, Nicole Sanchez is the VP of Social Impact, and these are all people who are making just incredible change in the world. And sometimes it kind of makes you feel like this. Um, <laughs> it kind of feels like you're just kind of putting on a costume um, when you're surrounded by real life superheroes and that you need a little bit of time to grow into your role. And so these are some of the lessons that I've learned from building Fearless. Um, First lesson is that I thought I knew what I was doing. I was like, you know what, I got PTSD, like I've been through shit, like I have anxiety, like I can do this, I know exactly what's going on. And it turns out I don't. Um, there is a lot about um, trauma and a lot about PTSD that I don't know about. Um, it's a surprise to literally nobody but me that I am not a medical professional. 
um, which means that I don't know everything about mental illness or mental health um, and different types of triggers for people. So when people started to write in, they say like, hey, I have this phobia, or I have this trigger, can you add this category, or this category, or this category, or this category, it really started to weigh on me because I couldn't fix everything. I couldn't fix these people. And there's so many things out there, and it's like, I'm not providing a perfect product for these people. And there's things that are falling through the cracks and it may trigger somebody, and I took that personally. And this led to a lot of anxiety. <laughs> He didn't want to go outside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this clip is actually 30 seconds long. <laughs> he got rug burn on his belly. Um, but this led to a lot of anxiety because, like I said, I, I take this really seriously and I want to help everybody and I want to fix as many people as I can. And I almost didn't make it out here because I was so anxious about presenting this to a bunch of strangers that, and, and I know it's not perfect and I know that there's so many holes in my app, and I just want to fix it, and I can't because I'm only one person. But, you know, I'm here, so obviously made it through it. And the third lesson is that empathy is really hard. You know, you have to have the emotional space, emotional capacity to listen to everybody and to say, like, your experiences are valid. You went through something, and I hear you, and I know it's important and I'm trying the best that I can to actually help you. But boundaries, I've found out, are even harder because I never want somebody to be alone like me. And so I take this personally and I want to help everybody in any way that I possibly can. But that also means I need to have boundaries for myself because it's my job to build the best product that I can for my users, but it's not up to me to fix them. That is their own agency, that is their own responsibility. It is my job to help them on their journey. And the last lesson is that even though this causes me a lot of anxiety, causes me a lot of pain, it's worth it. Because the stories and the connections that I have with people, the strangers, which, with people that I've never met on the internet, is so empowering and so amazing they have that sort of connection with somebody over a shared experience or something similar, it's, it's worth it because there's not a lot of people out there that build stuff for mental health and we need it. We really do. Um, and to have somebody say, thank you for thinking of me is such an incredibly powerful feeling. So I challenge you all, do not let your fears get in the way. <laughs> um, and to use, that, use your experiences <laughs> I know it keeps going, I'm sorry. <laughs> to use your experiences, they're valid. They make you who you are. They have, you get this experience that most of tech doesn't have. And if you have the space, build something out of it. Help other people like me who need it. And to tell, be able to tell people, I see you, I hear you, I know that you have experiences and they're valid. Thank you.